Hello to a sort of, kind of, afterthoughts video. I used that term in the last video of that kind after I finished From the Earth to the Moon. So this is has become sort of a tradition already, right, to always sit down after I finished a book and, and talk about what I learned from reading this book. Um, not only from the book itself, but also from doing that kind of reading. And there were quite quite a couple of things that I learned from from this book and from reading this book. After I finished um, reading Jules Verne's From the Earth to the Moon, I, I thought a long time about what to read. And because since the reading of Moby Dick is still going on and will still be going on for quite a while. I wanted to I wanted to have something shorter, right? So um, not too long books at the same time. Because when I start a book on this on this channel, this is of course some sort of commitment, right? And I didn't I didn't really want to make a commitment <laughs> to yet another long book, but there was or is a Mark Twain book that I want to read and definitely will or almost definitely will read on this channel one day, which is a bit longer. Um, but yeah, as I mentioned, I, I didn't want yet another longish book in this project. So I was looking for shorter, shorter books. And that was the one, the double barreled detective story was the one that I stumbled over. and more or less immediately was fascinated. I didn't really know anything about this book, but wow, Mark Twain, right? Plus detective story. I wanted to read a detective story from 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 the get-go, basically, of this, when I realized that this will become a project. And I also want to have some sort of diversity in, in the books that I read. So yeah, detective story sounds good. And it was a novelette, so or is a novelette, so shorter, shorter story. So I have to give a spoiler warning for all of you who don't know the story, who haven't heard or read, read heard the reading or read the book. So there will be spoilers in this video, of course. Um because yeah, I, I probably cannot avoid spoilers when talking about the book. When I decided to read this book, as mentioned, I didn't really know anything about it. I, I did, did some research um, trying to avoid as much information as possible. And the first thing that struck me was that many of the copies of this book had this Sherlock Holmes silhouette on the cover. Which, which made me, of course, uh, curious, right? Um, I knew that, or I know that Mark Twain uh, was, a, was a satirist. So I, I had my suspicions and then I stumbled over, over a text uh, that, that revealed to me that Sherlock Holmes's nephew will show up. And so I thought, okay, let's also put put a Sherlock Holmes um, silhouette on the cover, especially since I saw a lot of books covers that featured this original illustration from the, from the first print, this original illustration by Lucius Hitchcock, and which I find interesting as an illustration, but I really didn't, didn't really, I think it would have given the whole the whole um, book a wrongish direction, knowing that this is sort of a detective story and probably, well, almost certainly because, well, Sherlock Holmes's nephew showing on, up on, on a book by Mark Twain, this would will be a, a satire. I, I was pretty sure about that. So um, I decided to use the, the um, original cover, which was only typo of the original book. I found that on Wikisource, which is now, of course, also that image uh, in the public domain. And I used a Sherlock Holmes silhouette that I found on Pixabay. The book was published in 1902. I don't know if I mentioned that. And 
it features, and I this is what I found really interesting because if we look at the title already, right, a double barrel detective story kind of gives away or gave away to me that it will be placed in the American West, right? Because that's guns and all. And um, double barrel gave me me a hint. I don't know if that was intended, of course, but that there will be sort of two story arcs. And this turned out to be true as well. We have that whole story of uh, Mrs. Uh, Stillman, who sent her son Archie Stillman to to find her ex-husband, Jacob Fuller, who abused her and to seek revenge for, for the abuse she had to endure. And then we have this whole uh, story arc of Flint Buckner and Fatlock Jones, right? Flint Buckner being an abusive person to Fatlock Jones. Fatlock Jones, by the way, the, the, the name already uh, is is super funny. And if, uh, if I, I don't know if you, if you drew the, the parallel immediately, but to me it was kind of clear, right? Fatlock Jones, Sherlock Holmes, um, play on words. So um, this whole story, this whole novel, novelette is kind of a, uh, a satire on the on the mystery novels of that time, Sherlock Holmes stories, of course, right? Did you know, by the way, that Sherlock Holmes wasn't really the first original detective of that sort, and that the the inventor of this mystery detective story sto story genre was um, Edgar Allan Poe with his, I think it was The Murders in the Rue, Rue Morgue, which was the first of, of these novels of that type. I think he wrote two. And those are said to be the, the original uh, mystery detective uh, novels that started this whole new genre. To look at this whole book or the reading from a sort of kind of a meta uh, perspective, what, what came to my mind, and please um, put your your view in, in the comments, right? Um, I, I, I'm really interested in, in your view, but to me, it was kind of this whole book being a a spoof, a satire on these mystery novels. It 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 shows through it is mirrored in the way Sherlock Holmes is described, right? As not the the person who solves the case, but the the person who creates the case. Who who he's sort of the author of of the crime, just like the author of these stories is the author of the crime itself, right? So. That to me was was kind of the 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 um, a clear a clear hint, and it's I have a bit the impression that that um, Mark Twain made fun of of the the authors in this case of course especially um, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. And we have to be honest. I mean, I love the Sherlock Holmes stories, but some of those are really kind of very, very far fetched, and and the way they are constructed are just really very, very, very um, not really down to earth. Let's put it like that. And I I have the feeling that this is. But again, please, if you disagree or if you have thoughts on that, please, please, please put them in the comments. I'm really, I'm really anxious to to hear your your view on this. So this is sort of the 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 meta level of this that is mirrored again in in the way of we have. Archie Stillman, who is presented as as having supernatural powers, which of course he doesn't have, 
yes, his sense of smell is heightened and he has this uh, sort of uh, dogish or bloodhoundish um, gift of, of smell, but that's not supernatural. It's quite the opposite. It's, it's natural. It exists in the natural world. And even he fails basically well yes he 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 finds flint buckner's murderer but he he completely fails finding his father right and this is this is another another level that when the whole ending shows that well Everything that happened was basically just an accident, right? It was pure coincidence <laughs> that, well, Flint Buckner is Archie Stillman's father. And so both basically fail. And then we have this whole thing that that Fetlock Jones can escape. So the because, well, the, the murder was, was committed because of, of a reason and, and nobody really cares and no, everyone basically says, yeah, we understand that you did that. So nobody did anything, right, to, to get, to get uh, Fetlock Jones back. So on the one hand side, I found this very, very funny and really clever. On the other hand side, to me, this was kind of a bit too clever, as in this whole novel to me felt a bit like, or novelette to me felt a bit like rather than uh, as, a, as a draft of a novel, right? Like a bit of a sketch. So, okay, this is the first draft. Let's make a novel out of that. There are lots of bits and pieces that I would have loved to explore more. On the other hand, maybe the ideas behind that novel are not, not, substantial enough to make it a bigger thing i i don't know well on the other hand i i do think that uh, an author like uh, mark twain would have would have been able to make this a big novel that uh, is is interesting from the first to the last page and i i enjoyed this this novel tremendously i really enjoyed it and especially these two scenes um that to me are like the the center of of this novel number one this this hilarious scene which was really super hard for me to read without laughing when uh, Wells Fargo Ferguson and Ham Sandwich another hilarious name um in their mind in their minds recreate um how or not recreate create um imagine how sherlock holmes would have solved the case of the missing of the missing child so on the one hand side they this is and that then mirrored later in this whole scene when archie stillman completely deconstructs sherlock holmes and everyone suddenly jumps over on on archie stillman's side so um this i i think these two these two um chapters were some of the most hilarious chapters that I ever read in any book. So really, I really, really thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. And there's another thing that came to my mind, and this is really what I learned from reading this book. Um, and because when I sit down to read these things, there's... I very often ask myself, wouldn't wouldn't it be the better way to to really sit down before and prepare that? I mean, completely put aside aside that this would be a different project. This wouldn't be this project, right? That this project is me sitting down to read a book and forcing myself to read it because I started the book and I have to read a chapter per day. And so there's not even the time that I do, and I try my do my very best to to read it in the best way that I can, and I hope it it works for you as well. Um, so, but with this book, and especially with this, what I mentioned to be a meta level, I I remembered a book that I once read about about acting and about writing as well, 
And it's a book by David Mamet. Um, the book is, the title is uh, True and False. And I, I certainly will not discuss David Mamet's political views uh, in this video. And David Mamet's or nobody's political views should be should be interesting when we talk about uh, a technical description that this these people make, right? And this is how I view his books on writing and directing. They're, they're sort of kind of technical descriptions, manuals. Well, this is, of course, his opinion, but um, th th these are not... views on 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 uh, issues of society or politics or religion or whatever so um yeah let's not talk about political views um what what david mamet wrote in his book is what i found very very fascinating and it goes in both ways in both in ways of of writing and also in ways of of acting and to an extent reading a book is acting and what he does as a writer and director or what he did as a writer and director is to instruct his actors or future actors or actors in training or whatever you might want to call it or even seasoned pros right with his book true and false that to trust the script more right because he said if a, if a script is good and i think we can we can assume that a writer like like Mark Twain gives us a good script and knows how to construct a script. We will, we as the reader and also as, as an actor, will get the needed information to understand what the author wanted to tell us at the right moment. So everything we need to know about the story so far is revealed at the exact moment when we need it. And this doesn't mean like, okay, we need to know something now, so I'm, I will just put it in there. So there are bad books and horribly written books when, we, when you always get the information just at the right moment. Um, this is about construction. So everything that hasn't been, it goes more in the direction of everything that hasn't been written yet and everything that hasn't been revealed to the reader yet is not important yet for the book, right? For the story, for the understanding of the story. And if something is revealed later to give a twist to the story, then this is on purpose. And you didn't, you don't need to know that before. And you don't need to know that before as a reader, of course, or else you'll, you'll be missing the surprise. But you also don't need to know this as need to know this, important, right? As the, 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 the actor of a script, right, of a play or whatever. Because you are supposed to 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 um, com communicate the character without the the knowledge that the author doesn't want the audience to know, right? If the person, if let's take take a bad guy, right, and you it is presented as the loving husband in the beginning. Right, and then the big surprise later, he's a serial killer. If if the actor who know who who read the script portrays him from the beginning with that bad and with these these bad intentions in his acting, then it's not a surprise anymore. So I I, I don't know if that makes sense. So of course, yes, it's kind of a, a walk on the tightrope, and sometimes we need to know some information. And I don't say that um, I didn't. Here and there, in in the re very rarely, but I did I did reread a chapter when I realized I did something completely wrong. But in ninety nine percent, well, not I haven't done that a hundred times, so I can say ninety nine percent of times. So it was basically every time that I just misread something and so gave the character a wrong uh, a wrong or gave a wrong impression of of the character because I read something wrong. So. To 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 sum this up, I think that yes, if if someone can can read from a page, and can can do um, 
can at least make something a bit interesting, then everything what we need to to transport to the audience, really need to transport to the audience, is already there. So, so yeah, these I think are are my thoughts on on the book and on my reading, um, uh, which will be which book will be will be the next book on this channel, the the book that I have that I will be reading on every second day or on every first day, depending on what you how you consider the the Moby Dick readings. Um, the last times I always said, well, uh, surprise, surprise. This time, I don't think that I can. There's, it's absolutely clear and absolutely obvious what will be the next book. It will be, of course, I have to go um, to um, the original, as in the the book that, or one of the books that this spoof, this satire is based on. Of course, the next book will be a Sherlock Holmes book. And... Um, yeah, I won't be telling which one yet. <laughs> At least a bit of surprise. So, hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned something new. Um, hope you you uh, get in get in touch. Right, I'm I'm interested interested in hearing your thoughts. I'm interested in in reading your thoughts. So please do not hesitate to put them into the comments. And if you like this project, you can support it by liking the videos and subscribing to the channel. So this is this is all that um, is needed. So bye-bye till next time.